Hi everyone. Well, the time has come to look inside that cupboard and I'm going to talk you through some of my patterns and other things that I have in the cupboard. So here we go. So today I'm going to take you into the cupboard that has all of the, um, all my patterns. So, right, let's have a look. So as I've said before, this is actually a wardrobe. So <clears throat> I've got a lot of patterns up here, which I'm going to go through bit by bit, if you're interested. And I've got some um, document holders there that are holding that. Then here's, you see, that's just coat hangs. Then I've got all my bags, my patterns. Some patterns I keep hanging up. Does anyone else do that? So then you don't have to iron them. Sorry, rustling. So then you don't have to always iron them and have them ready for when you're cutting out. So um, I've got some self-drafted ones. That's one I took from an existing top. Um, then this is one from 2018 that I made from a block. So it's when I did my course at TAFE. Um, oh, that's not from when I did it. I did the course in 2013 and then I've kept doing that, repeating that. So I've got my block for my skirt and I've got my block for my um, Sure Fit Designs sloper, they call it. They call it something different than what we call it here in Australia. So that's the top for the sloper for Sure Fit Designs and that's my sew over it um, ultimate shift dress i use that a lot so i've cut it into a lot uh, a really thick um paper and i've just i'm just using these coat hangers to get from the shop when i buy um clothing well i've i had these from collecting them from years but even um i just keep them and you can just pin them to them you see and i've even got some little messages on some of them you know me i like my little messages my little messages to myself my signage and then that's from the um the charm pattern um that one there so yeah i've got quite a few of those uh, and i do refer to those a lot and use them a lot a few more okay this section here um picking up from there i've got um some other hanging things here that's all things knitting at this end or in a little bit of that plastic fabric don't even know what it's called polyest poly don't know but it's another bag waiting to happen there like this pink one i'm going to make a green one one day so that's on my list of things to do this is um, knitting uh, this is hats and bag patterns and then that is knitting and crocheting patterns which i'll go through at some point then down here i've got uh, my big four patterns and so, some of them so I've got adult ones children ones some of them I bought brand new some of them I bought from oppos from op shops then I've got some more modern indie indie patterns in this section here so I've got so over it and Megan Nilsson, I've got a few of her patterns. And then these are some other ones that end up quite big. So I've got them sideways. And then down here I've got the um, equipment I use for making necklaces and jewellery making. I used to be right into that and I don't really do that much anymore. So um, I just keep it in case I want to... Um, repair something here i've got craft glue i keep it in that little thing and all things glue and then here i've got this cute little box don't you love boxes how cute is this box it's just cardboard and then i've got some uh, we used to call it fancy work some hand stitching and all the threads there i've got a couple of batches of this uh, my hands play up a little bit these days so i don't always do that but i used to do that a lot uh, all the threads 
for the hand stitching and the fancy work and needle craft. So sometimes I do that on garments these days because it's just a little bit. The tub here has fabrics that I keep to make toiles or practice garments. So that's like an old sheet and any other old sheets and off cuts and large pieces of fabric are sitting in there just for making toiles. So I don't often make a toile. I usually use um, fabric. So I don't often, I don't often make a toile um, and use toile fabric. Mostly I use some uh, fabric from the shop or that I've got from an op shop, actual fabric. And then if it turns out, then I'll wear it. So it turns into a wearable toile. So I like to do it that way because I just feel like a lot of effort goes into the practicing of the garment. So it helps me to um, finish things. And yeah, I've just got a little system and I, I do seem to work better when I, um, I'm working on actual fabric. Except for the times when I make things like that orange dress that was made out of an orange um, sheet. It turned out amazing and um, I wear that a lot, um, as you've probably seen in some of my videos. So that was a sheet out of my pile in the cupboard. Now back to the cupboard. So in this corner here, I've got just some storage things. This is full of knitting needles. I don't use this style knitting needles anymore. They're the stick ones. Um, I don't. Um, and then I've got into all different interfacings here. Now they're at the ready. I've got another box with interfacings as well. This is all bag making buckram and special stuff for bag making. This is for bag making as well. I've got a fair bit there. Adam from Adam Sews, you'll recognize that kind of stuff for making bags. And then I've got some really stiff buckram back here. Um, I've got like a full meter of it there. So I can, um, yeah, I can make any bags anytime that I feel like it. So that's that. This, how pretty is this beautiful little handbag? Um, I've had at an oppo and I just had to get it because it was so pretty. I have used it. I've gone out. It's um, it's just all hand embroidered and it's got a little bit of bling on the top. It's just so beautiful. Um, and uh, inside you can wear it um, across the body with that strap or and just carry it um, with that handle. So it's very nice going out of an evening. Um, so that is that. Very pretty. Right, so we've got the first box of patterns that we're going to explore together. Now, some of these I've even forgotten that I've still that I've got here. And are you like that? You've got so many patterns. You've seen that's some of mine. I've still got others. We'll get to that. This might end up being a series, I think, of videos. So let's have a look at these together. So you might hear a bit of rustling. Um, my apologies from the start. Some people have said they like the rustling, but um, anyway, <laughs> um, this is a hat that I've um, drafted out of a book of someone's. It's just one of those bucket hats for a kid, a child. Um, I've made this before. This is a backpack bag. It was not that easy to make. I'm sure the people um, out there in um, bag making land are way more experienced than me at making bags and have figured this one out. But honestly, just about did my head in. And it was for a friend's, um, I think it was her 50th birthday. I've never seen her use it. I don't see her that often, so she's probably using it. But it was not a lot of fun. Let's put it that way. So that's that one. I only used it once. Um, what else have we got? Oh, I've got an apron there. Casserole cover. Um, uh, I thought I might make that one day. It's on a coat hanger and you put your earrings in it or your necklaces. Honestly, you may or may not have noticed that I've always got different earrings and necklaces on. I need one of these things. But I don't really have space in my wardrobe. Um, but I could almost display them. Actually, that's not a bad idea. You know, like when you say things, sometimes you realise it. So anyway, I might make that one day. I'll leave that out. Uh, what else have we got? 
Um, oh yeah, see this thing here? That was an idea that I saw in a book once, so I took a photocopy. Um, and it's just one of those graters. Someone has painted it, and then they put little feet on it, and they've got the earrings in it. Well, attempt to do this, but on a very, very small scale. This is my version. Such a great idea, but look how many earrings. That is only probably half of my earrings. And look at all this space, but I can't put them in those little tiny holes. And these are just the hooky type of earrings. I've got the other style where you've got to put the little thing at the back, the butterfly clip. Um, so they're kept somewhere else. But this is a great idea, except if you knock it over. There's not a lot of happiness that happens out of that event. Knock that over and then a few swear words. Yeah, that's happened once or twice. But that's a great idea. But you noticed, easy to notice, I did not paint mine and I didn't put little feet on them. That's because um, I wanted it and I wanted it now. Um, I've <laughs> made that a few years ago. So that was a winner. Now this next pattern, the pocket pouch. Um, I've made this a couple of times and it's a winner. I absolutely use this one a lot to death, as they say, literally, and it died. Um, I don't even have a picture of it. It um, All the insides came to bits, so I, um, I had to throw it out. I was very sad about it. Um, anyway, that's that bag. Um, now this one, Russell Russell. Um, and you'll notice Monica Pool. I've got a lot of Monica Pool bag photos, uh, patterns. So this bag I've not made before, but um, I use this style of bag a lot. So uh, again, I might leave that one out. I might make that one next. This could be a treacherous thing to do because I'm going to be reminded of my patterns and then I'm going to want to make stuff. Sorry. Then I'm going to want to make stuff. This one, don't even know where it came from, but it's in an envelope. So someone's given me a copy of this. Um, it's a uh, just a shopping type bag. So that's actually a really good bag. Designed to fit large 20-inch blocks. Ah, oh, that's for quilters. I'm not on the other side yet. Not going to the dark side. I've, some people would say that making bags is the dark side. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, now, this one here, this bag pattern, the spice of life has been the spice of my life. I've shown you this um, pattern before, and I think I've showed you a couple of these bags. And it's the moonshine bag. And I'm going to show you a couple of these now. Um, I've made this a lot. I've used this pattern so much that inside this bag, which the pattern lives in, I've got spare this and leftover that and all these sections made that um, I might want to use when I make the next bag. So little pockets already made, various things. So I've got the small size and the larger size. And um, just one moment, please. Check them out. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the very first one I ever made. Um, and I love it. It's a gorgeous bag and it's it's got one of those, I know there's a name for it, pop open bag sections. It's lovely. And so it is following the pattern exactly as it um, suggests. The only thing, I didn't put any feet on the bottom. And it's got pockets. And it's all with recycled fabric. I love this bag. I might leave it out and start using it. Um, so that's that bag. Aren't they pretty ladies? I've got those. Um, you saw that fabric when I went through my fabric stash. Um so that's those. That's that one. 
Next. Then I made this bag. You've seen this one. That's made out of a jumper. And I, it's a classic type of 80s jumper. How cool is it? Looks like it's a knitted bag. No feet yet. And the inside. And I put some special jazzy stitches from my machine at the time. That's a nice bag too. Uh, then I've got this one here, which is from that pattern as well, but it doesn't have, it's got a different top on it. Um, this one, it's got a bit of decoration on it. So it's got different button, little pussy cat. It's got little thingy on the grabber and all recycled fabric. Uh, the inside is, and this yellow is from a man's shirt. It already had that dot, dotted um, hand stitching on it. So that's been used for where the zip is. These bag handles were an old bag that I keep, I keep the hardware from old bags. And this one's got feet, so it doesn't touch the ground. And the inside, it's a bit grubby, I think. Yeah, it's got lipstick all over it, of course. Um, they do go in the washing machine. I have been known to wash them. I do wash them, but you've got to take the insides out. It's got a, a floor on it, which you take out. And I made the zips bigger. I mean, sorry, the pockets bigger because I find um, the other ones are a bit little. And then I've put extra on this side, somewhere to put my lipstick, of course, somewhere to put my pen, my biro. And somewhere to put my spare glasses so you're not mucking about with packets and covers you just put it in there because it's fabric it's nice and soft and I've got a spare one here that I can put Panadol or something Panamax so that's a favorite I use this one a lot very attached to that one then there's this one here now, a lot of work has gone into this one. Sorry, they're down on the floor. So you've got to see the top of my head every now and then. Um, this one, is, I've hand embroidered this one. And it's like my going out bag. <laughs> um, I've got a couple. And so this one has got um, purchased handles. And they've been replaced. So that's all hand stitched on. It's not as nice as when it was new. And it's got a little teddy bear. It's quite shiny. Oh, it's got a little butterfly. Um, it's quite shiny, this one. And it's got a, a magnetised clasp instead of a zip. And it's got love, peace, goodwill to all men. Nice writing inside. I've also discovered I made a couple of bags and it was I made it with black inside. Looks lovely, but you can't find anything because it's too dark in there. So I just find that calico with a bit of a jazz, jazzed up pocket is the best way now. I've discovered that. Or a lighter colour. So I'll just get the next one, which is the last one in the series. So this one, I think you've seen this one too. It is because this is uh, made out of that plastic fabric. And you have seen this because I remember now I showed you. And this has got really cool inside fabric. So this is another favourite uh, and very much a summer bag in my mind, even though it's suitable for winter. And you saw that I've got some green in that cupboard. You, see, you saw that I've got some green of this stuff. So that's begging, absolutely begging to be made. Now, the last one I have using this pattern is the big one which you might have got a glimpse of earlier uh, I know a lot of people that use their um, normal handbag or purse is this big but I keep it to um, I sometimes when I go over east when I go over to Melbourne I might use it as my handbag and my purse but it used to be a cardigan. 
how cool is it and i've turned it and sewn down the middle where the buttons were positioned the buttons how i like put a bit of um embroidery there myself these are pockets how good are these pockets look one there one there really cool and then i've just got a flower there there's the back remember these from the 80s with all these baubles this one's coming off it needs a bit of a repair job um anyway so the inside i made it slightly different again and it probably needs a wash but uh, calico lined this section here is all padded and you can put an ipad in it or a tablet i don't often do that um i use it for different purposes got another little pocket um and then i've got a third pocket in the middle section in this bit here there's a pocket on the inside that's handy as well so it's really good for the knitting projects this is my next knitting project um and then you just carry the bag um it's it's a favorite um what else have we got oh there's this bag here again from monica pool i haven't made this bag but my sister has she's got a few of those they're amazing those bags again i've been one day i've been meaning to get to that bag here's another one she gave me um she gifted to me so it's it's a bow bag it's a really nice bag she takes that away with her a lot and she has projects in it and various things so again one day i should make that what am i doing making these videos when i can be sewing ha <laughs> um then i've got another one of monica pools this one's the moonshine again i haven't made this one i've got a lot of bags to be made haven't i i did get on a real roll about a decade ago of making all these bags and um and then uh, i got i got enticed by making clothing and that's where it all began no i was already sewing but um i got more into that so this is a hat pattern from mccall's bucket hat um again that's this pattern's from my sister and i've just drafted off what size m for my grandson but I don't know that it fits him, so I need to. I've got a pattern number written down that I'm going to purchase to make him a bucket hat. Uh, we've nearly finished. Now we've got. A, um, a hat. Well, it's a craft pattern book. And it's got apron. Hat. And bag for the garden. Um, and I've made only the hat out of that, the actual bucket hat. And I've got an orange one that's very faded for summer. And I'll wear that if I go to the pool and it doesn't matter if I get chlorine on it. And this hat, which I made out of that pattern, it's all lined and everything. And I literally wear this every day. I literally wear this when I go walking. Um, it's not the, the most beautiful hat on my head, I don't think. I think it could be better. Um, but, but you know, maybe I could wear it differently. Uh, I could wear it with a bit of pizzazz. <sighs> so, one more bag pattern. And it's, again, Monica Pool. This one's the Piccadilly. Uh, I haven't made that purse, but I've only made the bag before. Um, I don't recall when. Oh, at least three, might be five years ago. Um, and it's I'm currently using this bag. So here it is. Now I've used faux leather on this. I um, uh, The fabric was from an op shop. And uh, I've put binding all the way around. What it's called? 
no um, and I've got feet on it and you see it's got the faux leather at the bottom and faux leather I made made the straps myself then it's oh this is you can see it's my current bag so I've got my sunnies in there and my other thousand pair of glasses not thousand it's got um, a bit more of the love peace and goodwill to all men another pocket um, and other little sections in there and I, I just like to have this is a great bag to take as a daily bag um, but you have to walk like this with it you have to wear it like that because you can't put it over your shoulder or you have to carry it you know in your hand at the end of your hand which um, is good but it's not for all occasions so <laughs> That's going to be all for today, I think. So that's that's all of those patterns. Thanks for joining me today and exploring my hat patterns and the bag patterns and the start of looking at all of the patterns that I have in that cupboard and other things. So uh, thanks again for joining me. And thanks for hitting like and subscribe and for being uh, part of the community. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.